Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the Open Orbis PS4 tool chain tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create a project in both Windows and Linux. Windows, we're gonna be doing that through Visual Studio and Linux through the command line. And we're also gonna be looking at the generic structure of uh, homebrew applications and how their files are set up and why they are the way they are. So uh, let's just jump into creating a project first in Windows and then we're gonna do Linux after. So for Windows, Creating projects is a lot easier because we have template files to work with. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if you haven't set up the template files yet, which I'm guessing you haven't since you're watching this video, you're going to want to go to the root of the tool chain and you're going to find this extra folder. And in this extra folder is going to be two zip files. You're going to have Open Orbis PS4 self project and Open Orbis PS4 SPRX project. So the self is going to be used for game applications and the SPRX is going to be used for libraries. So both these template files are provided for if you want to do either of these things. And what you're going to do with these zips is you're just going to drag and drop them into the Visual Studio templates directory. So you're typically going to find that in your documents folder. So I've just brought that up right here so you can see that. So in your documents folder, you're going to have Visual Studio 2017 or whatever version you're using. And you're going to find this templates directory. In here, you're going to find project templates. And then right in here, you're just going to copy the zip files over just like that. And then what's going to happen is when you open up Visual Studio, uh, you're going to have an option for project types and you're going to be able to create uh, homebrew applications right from there. And it's going to set up all the files you need. So once you have these installed, you can just go ahead and open up Visual Studio. Okay. So here we have Visual Studio and we're going to go to File, New, Project. And then if you go to Visual C++, you'll notice right here, Open Orbis PS4 self project. So we're gonna make a self project and that's basically just a homebrew application or a game. We're just gonna call it something fairly trivial like uh, my homebrew or something, okay? Just for the sake of the tutorial. So when you create this project, you're gonna notice a few things in the directory structure right away. First of all is obviously you're gonna have your source file. So it sets up a little main.c++ file for you. It includes stdio.h and has main. So one thing I will say right away, as of recording this tutorial, the tool chain does not support STL for C++, okay? So you can't use uh, STD string or STD C out or anything like that. Anything from the standard library you can't use at the moment. That is uh, planned for the future, but it's uh, really hard to do from a tool chain perspective when you do, don't have uh, too much to work with. So we are gonna be getting that out there, but that's not out right now. So that's why you notice it's it says C++, it's a C++ file, but we're actually gonna be writing C in here. Um, you can use C++ features, but you can't use STL. So just keep that in mind. So it'll create that source file for you. And then it's also gonna set up this build.bat. This file, generally, you do not have to touch. It's mainly there for the build functionality of Visual Studio to use. The only time you're gonna to need to do anything in here is when you're adding libraries. If you're gonna be using more libraries than just libc and libkernel, you're gonna to wanna to add those flags in here at set libraries. Generally though, anything below that, you do not need to touch because they are all set up with the environment variables. They're set up in a way that uh, you shouldn't have to touch them. You can if you want to, but just be aware that anything you touch down here will be important and could end up breaking stuff. So that's all there is to the Visual Studio project. You're just gonna start coding right away. That's what's really nice about the Windows side of things is you can literally just go ahead and build the solution with what we have right now and uh, we can get something out here. So if you just go over to your solution and you hit open folder on File Explorer, there's a few things here that are of note that you may wanna know about, especially for debugging purposes. So right in the root, right with the solution, you have eboot.bin. This is your eboot that's gonna go on the system. It is the final self file. This file is not too useful for you for debugging. It's only your final build to go on the system. And the reason I say that is the, the eboot file is, is packaged in a Sony special format. So if you throw this into something like IDA, it's not gonna give you anything useful but there are intermediate files that are kept and not deleted specifically for if you wanna be able to 
uh, do some, you know, analysis, uh, some binary analysis on your binary if you run into any issues or anything like that. So if you go into your, uh, the folder, the name of your project, and you go into x64 debug, you're going to find all the intermediate files. So that includes the main object file, the original elf. Now this file is, uh, is going to have like the symbols and everything in it, but it's not going to be the elf that the PS4 understands. This is like a Linux elf. Okay. The OL file, however, is Orbis elf. That's what that is short for. And that is basically a file that the tool chain spits out and is the second to last file that goes on the system. So basically what you have is you have an elf file being built, which then gets transformed into an OL file. And that OL file is then wrapped in a .self or an eboot.bin. So for debugging purposes, the file that you're going to find the most useful is probably the ELF file because this is going to have all the symbols in it. It's not going to have the custom dynamic linking that the OL file does, but you're going to have more debugging information to work with and ultimately that's what you're going to care about. So this ELF file and the OL file are both left here for your convenience if you want to be able to look at anything. But the main file that you care about for actually building and running your app on the system is the eboot.bin file right here. So that's how you build an application on Windows. Now we're going to switch over to Linux, which is going to be a little bit more tricky, but it's not too much more tricky. And we have some scripts set up to be able to do that. So it's as, e it's as easy as just running a script. Um, but, you know, you are going to be doing that through the command line. You're not going to have like a pretty... Uh, you know, dialogue to do that through because we're not going to be using Visual Studio on Linux. So let's jump over to Linux and I'll show you guys how to create a project there. Okay, so we've jumped to Linux. We are now on Ubuntu and I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a project on here as well. I've just written up a script to make it pretty much just as easy as on Windows with Visual Studio. It's not quite a fancy pop-up with a project creation dialogue, but it's pretty close. It's basically just a script that you run and I just added it into the extras folder of the tool chain. So I'll show you guys that really quick. So to show you guys the script, we'll open it up in nano here. So we'll go to tool chain extra setup.sh. So here is the script. All it does is it creates the necessary directories. It copies the make file from the hello world sample, which will be in your tool chain route, which uh, you've set up in the last video. And then it just creates a main.c++ file identical to the one that's created in Visual Studio. So uh, what we can do is I'm just going to run that script like so. And actually, I'm going to make a new directory. I'm going to make it the same as Windows, my homebrew. Uh, oh, I've already made one earlier when I was testing. So I'll remove that and make a new one, my homebrew. And then we're going to run that same setup script. Okay, so now that we've made that, we can see right in our directory, we have my homebrew and we have make file. So if we just cap the make file, the make file is basically the Linux equivalent of the uh, build.bat I showed you earlier in the window section. This is basically the exact same thing. Very similar here on Linux. You're gonna wanna add your libraries. If you have any additional ones to libc and libkernel, you're gonna add them in right here in your make file. Everything below that, you probably don't need to touch once again. Okay, and then if we just uh, go to my homebrew again, just like Visual Studio, we can edit main.c++. As you can see, it looks the exact same. So if we go back directory, now that we've set up the project and we have our basic source file up, I'm going to show you once again how to build it on Linux. Unlike Visual Studio where we have that build file menu, uh, we're just going to run make because the make file is going to do essentially the exact same thing. So we just run make. And that's going to run all the commands necessary. And if we do an ls, we can see right here, eboot.bin, just like on Windows. And then if we go into my homebrew and we go into x64, you'll see again, we have all the same, oh, sorry, and also in debug. We have all the same intermediate files as well, minus the Visual Studio files that were there before. So we have the main object file, the elf, and the Orbis elf. So that is all there is to it. Uh, we've made it very, very easy and straightforward to get projects going on both Windows and Linux. 
In the next video, we're going to be looking at actually making a more useful project. We're going to be doing like a little sample of CPU rendering 2D images. Now we do have a sample in the tool chain that does the same thing, but I'm going to do a video on it just to take you through kind of um, some of the headers and getting used to using the tool chain. So we're going to be doing a few videos on that. Uh, that's going to be a little bit longer than this one was, uh, but this just shows you how to get a basic project environment set up for both Windows and Linux, and that's all there is to it.